What's up, YouTube? It's me, it's Arthur, a.k.a. the Andy Comic Book Guy. First of all, I want to say rest in peace to Neil Adams, who died on April 28th, and George Perez, who died on May 6th of this year. We lost two legends. We lost two legends in the industry. They will never be replaced. If you do not know these gentlemen's catalogs, if you're not familiar with their material, look them up. It's a who's who of characters, of books. Too many in the name. Too many in the name. Uh, I may do a separate video just honoring both of their legacies. It's kind of ironic that I'm starting to show off um, honoring Neil and George for the work for DC and Marvel and so forth. And the subject that I want to talk about was why can't the comic book industry create superstars today? Why can't the comic book industry create superstars anymore? Why can't we? I posted this question originally last week on Facebook and a lot of independent creators, they provided a very interesting conversation. Uh, I agree with a lot of things they said, but I kind of had a different take on the conversation. I know people like Sean James, who saw the topic. He was like, yo, I feel inspired. I'm going to make a video about the same thing. He did it. Go watch this video. Very interesting take, again, on the subject of why can't the comic book industry create superstars anymore? It's early as fuck, and I'm making a video, but I'm here for you. If you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, all that usual YouTube stuff. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. So why can't the comic book industry create superstars anymore? Now, when I posted this question on Facebook, many people, they had the same answer. Wizard Magazine and Image Comics. It was a perfect fusion of timing, creating a brand, and having the biggest publication at that time backing these creators. So, timing. Wow. Wow. All of these artists are quitting Marvel. They're forming their own brand. And the internet wasn't what the internet is today. So Wizard Magazine is where all of us old people now got our comic book news. We found out, hey, this book is coming out. This book is coming out. We got to read creator interviews. And Image Comics, the founders were in bed with Wizard Magazine. Wizard Magazine was basically like, hey, we'll put y'all on the cover, at the cover, at the cover. We'll write article after article. So Wizard Magazine was really responsible for image blowing up the way it did in a lot of ways. Wizard Magazine was responsible for image comics blowing up the way it did. It's not taking anything away from the creators, but you take Wizard Magazine out of that equation, we may not be talking about Image Comics in 2022. Just saying. Just saying. Todd, Rob, Eric, all those guys, they created a brand. It's very important. They created a brand. This was not individual creators doing their own thing. They created a brand. People rally behind a brand. That's why Marvel, DC, and the other publishers have gotten away with some of the bullshit that they've gotten away f with for years. Both good bullsh bullshit and bad bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is some good bullshit out there. But people buy into a brand. The titles are just individual titles that are part of that brand. So if people trust that brand... They're going to buy these titles. If people trust these brands, 
they're going to buy into the titles. That's why when people, they release their independent comic books and they're like, I can't create, create a fan base with this. What am I going to do? The art is good. The story is good. All that stuff is good. But they fail to realize they need to create a brand. And any titles they put under that brand, people will fuck with. It's that simple. You create a brand, people will come to you. And not only creating that brand, you got to market, promote, all that stuff. Wizard Magazine's not here anymore for you. So what do you do? What do you do? Here comes crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo. Individually, some people are making money. Some people are making money hand over fist. They are making money individually. But a lot of these people struggle with creating that brand where people see, I say, BS Comics. They will buy anything under that BS Comics label. That's creating a brand. Because people, they trust that brand for the quality, for the stories, for the art, whatever. People are just creating individual books. Now, I know some people are like, But the indie comic book guy, I saw people, you know, they have a bunch of issue number ones under this publishing imprint. Yes. I've seen, I too have seen these publishers who they instantly want to be, as Raymond Leonard would call them, Stan Lee. And they will create five, six, seven issue number ones under this imprint. When are we going to see issue two, bro? Issue three, issue four of any of these titles? Never. Some of these people are so gun ho in creating comic books that they forget. Yes, establish your imprint. But if you just give people a bunch of issue number ones, are we ever going to get a story arc of any of these titles completed within a reasonable amount of time? Even with crowdfunding, creators are still struggling to get one to two issues, if that, out the gate and in people's hands to read. It's embarrassing. You cannot establish a brand that way. Give people a story arc. Been saying that from day one. If they like that story arc, then branch out. But if you just got a sea of issue number ones, no, that is not how you establish a brand. It's not how you keep customers because now they're frustrated. They're like, Am I ever going to get to see what happens in the next issue? No. But that doesn't answer the question. In my opinion, yes, the image and Wizard Magazine thing, very important to what happened with image years ago. There has not been a disruption of the industry since the founding of Image Comics in the early 90s. But some people would say, what about Comicsgate? And I, I, I mentioned this on a few videos. Comicsgate disrupted the industry from an internal, internal perspective. The average comic book fan has never heard of Comicsgate, has never, never heard of these SJWs. They don't know any of that. They just read comics. They go to the store. See a comic that looks interesting, they buy it. End of story. I say Comicsgate interrupted, disrupted the industry from inside only because we're the only ones that know about it. We're the only ones that know about it. But what did the disruption really do? It made a couple people rich who are part of Comicsgate, you know, Ethan and them.
but did it really affect the comic book industry? That's my question to you, my chat nerds. Did the creation and formulation of Comics Gate affect the comic book industry? If it did, how? In a good way? In a bad way? Let me know in the comments. Has Comic Gate had an effect on the industry? I'm not talking about making a few people rich. I'm talking about the industry itself. Yay, nay, let me know. Now, I'm mentioning Comic Gate for a reason because. Yes, from an internal perspective, they did shake up things. What did they shake up? You let me know. You let me know. My opinion, what they did was they did bring some awareness to some things that bothered them. As far as keeping traditional comics alive, uh, we've heard it all. We don't, they don't want waste, uh, race swapping, gender swapping, uh, all this stuff. Some people say they're racist. Some people say they're homophobic. I don't want to get into all that, but I do want to know how do you feel that Comic Skate has changed the industry? If they did it at all. If they did it all. Now, why can't we create a superstar in 2022? Why? This is the same problem that the music industry had. The music industry dealt with the same issue. What happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. The rise of the influencer is what happened. That is why we cannot create a superstar now. Fan influencers have overshadowed comic book creators, comic book writers, letters, etc., artists. These fan influencers, you got Clownfish, you got Young Ripper, you got all these other influencers, bur Blurred Without Fear. They have overshadowed the creator because they did what a lot of these creators were not doing. They created a fan base. They created an audience who learned to trust their opinion, good or bad. They learned to create an audience. When you create that audience, people will buy in. And as Comic Gate has proven, you create that audience, you can monetize off your haters. Is that what Young Ripper always says? Monetize off your haters? He's telling you what he's doing from the start. If I sit here and make videos all day talking about I hate Marvel or DC or whatever, I should make videos talking about how much I really hate cheese on tacos because that's really an important issue to me in my life. But I'm not going to do that. But if you create a narrative and you have people who share that same opinion, they will come. It doesn't have to be about hating something. It could be about something you love. Those people will come. They will find you because they're seeking out someone with similar views, similar thoughts. You can monetize off that. People do it every day. They do it every day. But these fan influencers, and this is the danger of fan entitlement, They've taken it a step further, and many of them believe that their thoughts, opinions, and whatnot are more important than the companies and the brands and whatnot. They can do it better. They can do it better. Have we seen these fan creators do it better? Not yet. Not yet. And so what's happened... Creators like Rob Liefeld and uh, so forth, they've had to try to catch up. They were late to the party when it came to YouTube and podcasting and things of this nature. Late to the party. So now they're having to do something. If 
any of you have been to any comic book convention, you know a lot of creators, they don't want to talk to you. Some of them, you know, they just want to draw. They ever look up, people are passing by, they're just drawing. Talking to people is an art form. Not everyone wants to do that. Not everyone has that skill set. But now, creators, whether it's a writer, artist, whatever, they're having to develop the skill set and talk to y'all. They're having to talk to y'all. It's a reason why you see so many independent uh, comic book podcasts and YouTube channels where they have these panels where they have four and five people and you forget who the hell the host is. They do not feel comfortable talking to you. I want to talk to you. I like talking to you. I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to them. I tell people all the time. They're like, why don't you do more interviews on your channel? I'm like, I don't want to have the same conversation over and over. I don't want to do it. And when you talk creators, talk to other creators, a lot of times that's what you get. A lot of times that's what you get. So the reason why, in part, we cannot create another superstar in this industry is there's no brand to rally around. Image Comics was a brand that we rallied around. And that story, all oh, these creators, these artists at the top of their game, they're leaving Marvel and they're forming their own thing. You can't replicate that story. We bought into that story, and we bought into that brand, and Wizard Magazine co-signed all of that. Now we have to deal with fans who think they're more important than the creator, and we have to catch up as creators. We have to catch up. I tell people, I have a small channel on YouTube. Nobody gives an F about this channel when in the grand scheme of things because it's a small channel. This video is only going to reach X amount of people. I'm hyper aware of that. Meanwhile, like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. But what's more important to me is having this dialogue with comic book fans. People that actually read the material. Not people who read a press release and decide I'm going to make 10 videos based off a press release. No. People wonder, why, well, why don't you cover more comic book news. I could. I have an opinion on it, but I don't want to make videos just to make videos. I want to make videos when I feel that there's a conversation to be had or someone hits me up and like, hey, let's talk about this. Cool. Let's do that. So the rise of the social media influencer has had a heavy impact on the comic book industry as far as now we're looking at individual people and would-be creators and fans. We're supporting that individual or that individual. I can launch a Kickstarter today and X amount of people watching my videos may support it because they believe in my message or they think I'm witty or funny or goofy looking. I don't know. I don't know. But that's the power of influence. And we moved away from these brands to support individual people. And some of these people with their influence have become millionaires. I wish I was one of those. Like Loki, I really do. But I'm not. But the reason why we cannot create a superstar in this industry anymore is because of influence. People are following influencers and the creators who are trying to play catch up. Unless they already have an established fan base like Dan Fraga. They got a long road ahead of them. They have a long road ahead of them. I should know. I've written several comic books. Uh, Agent Solo, War is Chosen, God Cell, Africa Force, Lady Freedom. And I'm still playing catch up, but I understand the analytics behind it. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. 
Now, we may not be able to create a superstar anymore in the industry, but what we can create, what we can create it's a responsibility to control the narrative, to control the narrative of where we want this industry to go. Marvel, DC, IDW, these companies, they're going to do what they want to do. Talking about them, it's a waste of time. If we want to control the narrative of where we want the industry to go, let's show people by creating the kind of books that, you know, we want to read. It's that simple. It's that simple. We can't control corporations. No. Unless you get a job and go work there and do something from the inside and change the game. If that's your plan. Go for it. Otherwise, let's just create the books that we want to read. Support the books that you want to read. It's that simple. Maybe one day there'll be a story similar to Image or different that we can all rally around. There'll be a brand created that we can rally around. And if this thing is created, this entity is created, maybe all these influencers will rally around it too. And maybe if the stars align, maybe then we can create a superstar. But until then, it's going to be individual creators who have curated an audience, a following, a following, 